Camelot331 here, and welcome to The Best Game Ever, a series where I talk about games that are celebrated to be some of the best games ever. And today, we're going to talk about Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion. Now this is sure to set off some people, as I'm aware that this is an unpopular opinion. But the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion is the best game in the franchise. Maybe even the best game ever. To most diehard fans of the series, Morrowind is considered the best. Now I've played every single Elder Scrolls game, but I cannot get into any of them the way that I can get in to Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. To me, Oblivion captures a medieval high fantasy setting better than any other game. I felt there was more of a sense of adventure in it than any of the other games. Although it was not without its flaws, some of those flaws are why I love the game so much. What in the absolute hell is happening right now? Now I was there from day one. I saw the front page ad in Game Informer. I was completely blown away. I was just a little teenage boy. At this time, sequels were not being released every single year like they are now. So when you heard about a new Elder Scrolls game or a new Resident Evil game, it shook the foundations of my childhood. Shook them, man. I was a fat little kid who sat in his room, hours upon hours, playing games over and over. I can't tell you how many times I gave Nemesis stars. You want stars? I'll give you stars. And he deserved it. For all the PTSD he gave me, I still wake up sometimes in a cold sweat, hearing stars, stars off in the distance. So I had my collector's edition pre-ordered and I showed up to the midnight release, man. High-fiving everyone and shrieking in glory when I got my hands on this, which is aged and still intact, kind of like me. Probably better than me, unfortunately. So I ran home as fast as I could and I popped this bad boy in. I will never forget when I was 16 years old and seeing the startup screen for Oblivion for the first time. Maybe it's because of how young <laughs> I was, but I was completely blown away with the amount of customization that each race and class had. I was in absolute awe of how beautiful the game looked, as the opening cutscene gave you a bird's eye view of the city. This was a world I could not wait to explore. The way people interacted with me could be determined by how much people liked me based on how charismatic my character was. The amount of spells amazed me, summoning and striking lightning bolts at people in a way I've never been able to do in a game. With the faction quests, side quests, daedric quests, this world seemed vast and endless. Looking back on it and having played many other games, I'm aware Oblivion's not without many flaws. <laughs> I learned by playing Morrowind that Oblivion had significantly watered down the series. While they were throwing weapons and crossbows in Morrowind, those were removed and players were stuck with bows, which are great and all, but it would be nice to stick a throwing knife in a mark during a Dark Brotherhood quest. Weapon variety was further limited by the removal of spears, unarmored, and enchanting as a skill. Other skills such as long blade and short blade were consolidated into a single category, which was just blade. The combat system, while better than Morrowind's, consisted of pretty much just hacking and slashing, which was slightly improved on in Skyrim. One feature that was meant to create an immersive world actually did the exact opposite. NPCs would have conversations with each other, and the result was always nothing short of comical. <laughs> it's you. Hi. I understand the Fighters Guild is hiring new members. Not bad work for some folks. It seems Somerset so I've heard. A much more Go away, place. fool. Bye. Oh, if that's the way you feel. Great. It didn't help that the game had like one voice actor for each race and gender. So it sounded like you were hearing the same people all the time. <laughs> While Oblivion made it so he no longer had to stare at boxy faces, Oblivion still had some work to do. Many of the NPCs, even the ones that were supposed to be attractive, were like butt ugly, man. <laughs> Elves of any type sported like an almond-shaped eye that was turned at like a 45 degree angle. <laughs> and Khajiits had laughably exaggerated features that made them look like giant stuffed animals. Which is fine. <laughs> I like stuffed animals. But why it's still my favorite is because the things that it did right outweighed the things that it did wrong. I actually think some of the flaws enhanced the experience. Like I remember sitting in the Imperial City and just listening to people talk. And like eavesdropping on their conversations and it was hilarious. <laughs> While the Oblivion Gates were tedious, I could easily avoid them. I didn't have to go into the giant fiery door because I knew it was a fiery door. That equals bad. But the dragons in Skyrim, 
They show up like every five minutes, even after the main quest line's over. How do people even exist in Skyrim? Like, could you even imagine leaving the house to get some groceries? Like, honey, I'll be back with the milk. Or maybe not. <laughs> Probably not. Which means if she wanted to divorce you, it wouldn't be a big deal. Because the dragon will take care of you eventually. <laughs> Oblivion also had a diverse variety of enemies. Not as many as Morwen, but way more than Skyrim. <laughs> the spider guys, the Daedros, goblins. Better than like... Draugr, and Draugr, and more Draugr. <laughs> Which made the world feel wild, beautiful, and terrifying at the same time. I remember getting to a certain level and being like, who the hell does Spider Guy is? <laughs> There's just a Spider Guy coming at me. And then he'd just kill me. Because he was he was Spider Guy. Spider Guy's terrifying. What really made Oblivion for me was the quest, man. The Dark Brotherhood and the Mage Guild's quest is some of the best fun I've ever had in a video game. The Dark Brotherhood truly felt eerie as you entered the sanctuary, and some of the quests made you feel truly vile. And for the sake of spoilers, I won't say anything else about that, because it's just so great. Go experience it right now. Comment if you're going to do it. You comment, and you say, I'm doing it right now. The arena gave you a chance to go into a giant coliseum and fight the finest that Tamri Hill had to offer. And a, and a pig. Which also led you into an awesome quest line with a grand champion. Then when you become the grand champion, you get your own little personal adoring fan. Whom you can save the game and then reload and just kill him over and over. It's your own personal Jimmy Neutron to kill over and over. Hell, I think I'll kill him right now. <laughs> yeah. The Mages Guild, while grindy at first, led you to a giant conspiracy of necromancy once you got into the Arcane University, where you had access to enchanting and spellcrafting altars. Guild Quest and Morrowind were a little too grindy for my pace, which is weird, because I love classic WoW. Shout out. Skyrim's pace was a little too fast paced. In Morrowind, you worked with the Morog Tong, and I could simply present a writ of execution if a guard saw me, which took a lot of fun out of it for me. Daedric quest lines in Oblivion took me on amazing and trippy quests that gave you some of the best loot in the game, like the skeleton key, which is really essential <laughs> if you've watched my streams. Man, I had like 77 lockpicks at one point, and then I had one <laughs> on one chest. Oblivion feels like a living, breathing world. Each city in Oblivion is unique. The Imperial City was grand and huge and just split into districts. Bravil was a small town in Marshland that was just filled with Argonian immigrants. And Bruma was a snowy small town full of Nords. It has good enough graphics to be replayed, yet still feels like a traditional old Elder Scrolls game. Overall, Oblivion provides the best atmosphere for an Elder Scrolls game. And although I love Morrowind and Skyrim to death, they do not hold a place in my heart like Oblivion does. Nothing will compare to the first time I made my ultimate character and experienced the lore-rich world of Cyrodiil and Tamriel. Does it have nothing to do with gameplay and everything to do with nostalgia? Yes. So is Oblivion the best game ever? You tell me. Comment down below if you agree. That's all I have today. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Follow me on the Instagram. Make sure you catch my streams. And thanks so much to my patrons. Without you, I'm nothing. Without me... You have more money. <laughs> Until next time, get on it, dog gone it. Bye.